everyone. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me okay. I'm. Uh, this is my first time with uh, the face cam running at the same time. Um, but we're going live today. Um, this is a special stream for Matt Opens Toys um, for a number of reasons. Uh, normally, of course, I stream toy openings on um, Wednesday, basically just kind of trying to work through the obscene amount of toys that I've amassed um, that I haven't gotten a chance to open. And actually, since my last stream, I bought some new toys as well. Um, but today isn't today isn't one of my conventional streams. No, this is um, more of a little social um, social hour, I guess. I could I could call it that. Um, but I'm just going to be sitting here chatting. And uh, I recently acquired. Um, I ordered this on Wednesday. Oh, and it came in yesterday. This is the new. This is the new Lego uh, Daily Bugle set. Um, one of their first kind of creator expert level uh, Marvel sets. Well, not one of their first, the first. Um, yeah, this, this thing's pretty crazy. Um, doesn't really fit in the camera view that I have set up. Um, but it's, uh, it's massive. Um, this is, uh, as you can see, indicated here on the box, this is going to be for 18 plus, so it's clearly one of the sexiest Lego sets that's available. I did got it. Yes, it's very true. Hi. Um, yeah, it came in very, very quickly. I, I was surprised at how quickly it came in. Um, but 3,772 pieces. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Uh, oh, it also has like a very ridiculous amount of minifigures that come with it. Oh, hey. Hi, Sarah. Hey, Levi. Hey, Kira. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, my stupid face is uh, on stream. So enjoy that aspect of this. But yeah, I'm just going to chat and uh, build this big, sexy beast. Um, I don't know how long I'll be able to stream. Um, hey, thank you. I've had a mustache since last October. Yeah, and the, the cat ears were a gift from my wife. Um, yeah, really tall. Because this is a sexy 18 plus, um, this isn't an 18 plus stream necessarily, but this uh, 18 plus Lego set has, I think, characters that you probably wouldn't have seen otherwise. Like they included Blade and uh, Punisher and just things that you wouldn't necessarily expect in, um, in more of like the kid friendly sets. Even though they did make our good friend Deadpool here and Wolverine who are both um, noted murderers in the Marvel Universe. But, you know, I don't know. I guess uh, Punisher is a little more problematic, I would say, overall. Um, but I am going to open this, and then uh, we're going to get started on it. So I'm using some fancy new tools. <laughs> um, I got a, a microphone arm for this fancy microphone and uh, I got a second web camera besides the uh, T7 that I was using to record before so that I can show off this beautiful mustache. Um, oh my God, there's a lot in here. So this is bag 11. I, I am a little bit... Uh, I'll have to find out. I hope, I hope that it's printed, maybe? 12, 16. It appears that you don't actually get to Spider-Man until bag 16. Surprising. There's just so many bags in this thing. 13, 10, 14, 15. 
14, 13. They just keep coming, folks. 11, 10, 16. You think 16 is like one of the last one? Yeah, I don't know. 16 is a lot. I'm going to start tossing the ones that I'm not going to be getting to right away onto the floor. Normally, normally when I'm approaching a, um, a build that will have this many bags, I like to carefully sort them back into the box until I'm ready to do them. Um, but in the interest of time, So I'm thinking one of the reasons why I was not getting any of the lower numbered bags with some of these big Lego sets they uh, they have a box within a box and that that appears to be the case here as well. Yep. Oh, sorry. Sorry for the awful sound. <laughs> uh, so this is the box within the box that I guess has the earlier part of the build. Um, yeah, let me toss some of those in this other box real quick. All right. How's everybody doing this fine Memorial Day Saturday? I heard you like boxes, bro, so I put a box in your box. It is Memorial Day weekend, yes. Um, as somebody that works for a company that uh, gets those fancy pants federal holidays off. Oh, I'm sorry, Sarah. I kind of work retail, except I get all of the nice uh, federal holidays. Oh, sticker. It's a sticker. Means I can do a bad job of putting that on. Oh, I really got to stop setting these things down quite so loudly. Okay. Beautiful. Usually when I sit down to build something that's real big, I anticipate getting through about like one to five bags. We'll see how it goes. The other thing about streaming this is that with the, uh, with the T7 here that I'm recording with, I don't have a direct power to it. So it's running off of batteries. I don't really know how long it lasts. I haven't really tested that. Um, I guess we'll find out together. I was also saying before on a little test recording that I did that I didn't stream. I have a very bad habit in like video calls and things like that of I stare at myself. Uh, <laughs> I can't help it. Um, if you've worked in an environment where you've had to move to video calls and stuff like that in the last year, God bless you. But... Uh, I also, I don't know, no matter what's going on on other places of the screen, I'm just like, I find me and I l just can't stop staring. I don't think it's like a narcissism thing, but I also am concerned of how stupid I look at any given time. Um, I am a little vain, but I'm also, yeah, I'm a little vain. Yeah, that's fair. I don't have a follow up. No additional commentary needed. Oh. 
I, I do occasionally fear that I'll encounter a doppelganger for myself. And um, just... I don't know. I like the uh, I like the Southland Tales interpretation of encountering your doppelganger, where uh, you know space will just kind of fold in on itself. Oh my god! There's so many bags here. I like a nice, tidy, orderly build area, and this is just a lot. So we finally have one of the number one bags. And I'm just gonna keep tossing things onto the table and making that horrible echo sound with this microphone because I have no consideration for my audience, apparently. These are an unlabeled, unnumbered bag, so that means it could come up at any time. It's a surprise. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna limit the tabletop to like maybe it should honestly be bags like one through four. Cause this is a little messy for me. It's just it's not bad, bad, but it's you know. I swear to God, I promise I will stop slamming into this table and making that terrible echo sound. Is it as loud for you guys when I do that? Because it's kind of loud for me. <sighs> yeah. I could probably make some adjustments. There we go. I think that'll help a little bit. So have you all heard the Spider-Man speculation? Uh, for No Way Home. Willem Dafoe involved. Um, I mean, I like Willem Dafoe. Uh, that movie kind of sounds like a mess. Um, it really does sound like a terrible mess in a certain way. <sighs> I'm somewhat of a crossover character myself. Uh, yeah, Melina back is that, but I mean. You could say he didn't die. I mean, he probably should have died. But, I mean, you could hand wave that away. Like, um, Osborne dies. Like, he, he dies, 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 dies. Um, so, I don't know. Um, I, I like the idea. Honestly, with it being so clusterfucky. Oh, pardon my language. I don't know. Is that a thing that'll get me in trouble on Twitch? I don't really know. I think I've sworn before. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, there's no real saying if it's going to be really the same. Um, there's no real saying that it's going to be the same Osborne that Defoe played in the um, in the first one, you know. I don't know. I don't hate it. I mean, they use J.K. Simmons already, so it's kind of like it's open to anything. They could be like 30 second cameos. And honestly, sometimes when movies are horrible messes, I enjoy them more. Um, I think uh, X-Men Days of Future Past was something that you could point to and say that was a horrible mess of a movie but it was a very enjoyable and fun mess of a movie um even x-men apocalypse that's another one that i think not a lot of people have quite as much love for x-men origins wolverine but that was kind of i mean that was a mess for a different reason that wasn't like being overly ambitious with your narrative um i think when you start doing things like multiverses and like referencing in world or like real world just casting choices it's like you're bringing on a different kind of mess um in my opinion but it can be a very good mess i mean i like i like messy things sometimes you know 
Um, I would... Would this be better if Sam Raimi were directing it? Maybe. Um, also, Tom Holland, I mean, he's not that charismatic. I hate to say it. I mean, he seems more charismatic as an actor when I just see, like, interviews of him. He's like... You can maybe empathize or sympathize with his Peter, but his Peter is definitely not what I would call, like, charismatic. Um, not that Peter is supposed to be charismatic, but I just mean, like, on-screen charisma. Like, fun fun to watch. Um, it's not like Holland's bad, but he, always, he almost feels like a, a secondary character in his own movies yeah 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 i mean has there been a good peter pipe uh peter piper pizza um uh, has there been a good peter piper pizza you have to wonder um but unrelated uh has there been a good peter parker on screen i don't know um it seems like a hard role to nail honestly um it's just like such a specific thing because they need to be kind of a nerdy underdog, but there also needs to be an element of like charming vulnerability, like things that you can relate to. And I just think like that, that kind of thing is just such a nuanced performance. And then I would say at least initially, ideally you want like a young actor, right? You would want a young actor, but is a young actor going to have the acting chops to have that nuance of a performance? Um, does there need to be a charming vulnerability? You've read a lot. I mean, I would say, I would say in terms of pop culture's relationship to Spider-Man and the kind of general public Spider-Man that's going to, sell happy meals i mean he is you see some of that i would say like if you're gonna use that as like a measurement of how self-involved and difficult he may be then did did mcguire do a bad job then uh you know I think that's one of the reasons too why something like Spider Verse was so was so effective is because Peter doesn't need to be like the sole focus of it, you know. I think that there's an element of like the kind of story that works in a comic versus the kind of story that's going to work on the big screen, right? Um, I don't know. I mean. I think it can be done. I don't think that, I don't think they've nailed it yet. Um, yeah, honestly, what's that actor's name? Um, Jake, Jake um, Johnson? He's just too old, you know? Um, but I think, honestly, like something like that energy, I don't, I don't really even know. Um, I don't know enough young actors. I don't watch TV with like a lot of, young people involved in it necessarily the only things that i can think of that have like a bunch of significant like young actor characters is like riverdale like is there somebody on the riverdale cast that would be peter parker i've never seen it so do they just need to like give up on young spider-man um just do like old college professor Spider-Man. They haven't done it in movies yet, really. Yeah. But I think, like... I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I could see that. No Spider-Boys, only Spider-Men. Wow, interesting. So in bag numbers one through three, you get to Aunt May, uh, Gwen Stacy, The Punisher, Carnage, and 
Uh, maybe Ben Urich? I think that's Ben Urich. Sorry, that's Ron Barney. I have to admit, I don't know who Ron Barney is. Fake fan? Do I just pretend to like Marvel Comics so that girls will like me? I don't know. Uh, actual Gwen Stacy, I believe. Because there is a ghost spider in this set as well. And bags four and five will get to uh, Daredevil and then some other people that are like civilian bystanders that I don't really even know. I was very, I have to admit, I was very excited mostly to get the Daredevil minifigure. That's not the sole reason why I got this set, but I mean, it definitely, it took me from a, oh, that's interesting to a, oh, I should probably get this. And I should probably get it pretty much as soon as it's available, which I did. Uh, very impressed with Lego's shipping speed. Yeah, there's an absurd amount of minifigures that come in this. It's like more than... It, it would be like two collectible minifigure waves. Though admittedly, a lot of them are just like, who? Who, who are these people? Um, I had started the first issue of the current Daredevil run. I, have a, I, I just have a very bad time keeping up with comics. I keep up with Runaways... I just today picked up the latest issue of X-Men. Um, but those are like the only ones that I can really keep up with. And then like Liz and I have just been continuing to buy a bunch of manga that every once in a while I'm trying to work my way through. Though admittedly, again, I'm doing a bad job in terms of keeping up with that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Does anybody in chat have a dream Peter Parker cast? Who would you cast as Peter Parker? Do you care? Do you like Peter? I don't know. Okay. We're getting this build started. Um, I did assemble Aunt May. She has a plate of uh, hot, fresh cookies for you here. I'll, I'll bring her up close and I'll bring her into focus um, so that we can see Aunt May's delicious cookies. Look at that. Why not Marissa Tomei, Aunt May? I like that. Having not seen my cousin Vinny until very, very recently. Meh. Don't like don't like Spidey that much. Like Spidey fine, but Peter is kinda hmm. <laughs> Danny Pudi. Um just voice or the whole the whole shebang. He's getting a little older. I love him in Mythic Quest. <sighs> I'm a little thirsty, so I need to hydrate with some delicious Sam Adams summer ale um available now at your finest local grocers. By the way, this is a sponsored stream by Samuel Adams. Um, Stephen Jung. Stephen Jung. What about Stephen Jung as Spidey? Hmm? Huh? Hello, my wife. Thank you for watching my stream. Uh, I got many compliments, and by many I mean one compliment on the cat ears, so good choice. <laughs> yeah, I think Stephen Young could could be Spidey. Um, I I mean, arguably, maybe he's getting a little bit older too. But you know, I think um, I think he could be a good choice. I really enjoyed his um, his voice performance on Invincible. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, he was Glenn on The Walking Dead when Glenn was a character on The Walking Dead. So You don't know Dan you know Danny Pudi. Danny Pudi is um Abed from Community. 
and Steven Young is the voice of Invincible. He also played uh, Glenn on The Walking Dead. I, I think when they were saying they don't know these people, I believe they're referring to the actors, not the other individuals in the chat. Um, you're all people I know. So... I assume this is very much like that um, Wachowski television program, Sense8. That's what this was about. People that just know people through people. <laughs> uh, you don't consume... T Why consume television when you could consume beer? That's always been my... Opinion. What about um? Oh my gosh, what's his name? What about the guy from the room? <laughs> what about the guy from the room, as uh as Peter? You're tearing me apart, Gwen. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's a. Uh, there is Mark and uh. And Eve. Um, it's a it's a lovely Eve. Perhaps perhaps they will star in a future installment of Mad Open's Toys. Um, these are still available uh, as direct order from uh, from Skybound. Um, these are older McFarlane toys. They're they're five inches, I think. Um, so they're kind of like in scale with those random Saga toys that they had produced a while back chunky eve needs a to toy technology can't toy technology is not there it's not there no there's uh there's several saga toys they have lying cat they have um most of the main cast saga has toys yes yes um i feel like They'll crack the they'll crack the technology to give us a good girt sometime. A runaways box set. I I mean day one pre order. I'd buy two. Yes, uh, Lion Cat has a toy, um, along with Lion Cat's bald friend who I don't remember. I read several volumes of Saga, but I dropped off that real quick. I don't remember why. I mean I I love Brian K. Vaughan. Um, I love Runaways, so I bought all of Ex Machina, even though I only read about half of it. I really enjoyed Why the Last Man. Um, I really am looking forward to... Is there going to be like an HBO Max or an Amazon Prime Why the Last Man? So. Who would be a great Craven? Are you saying Steven Jung would be a great Craven? But Vaughn's been like writing a live action Gundam movie for like eight years. So I don't know. Um, Liz and I only have to watch the very last episode of Lost and we're done with Lost. I am so excited. I'm very, very excited. Tommy Wiseau. Tommy Wiseau would be a very good Craven. Done. that would be amazing oh my god wow i'm just i'm gonna live the rest of my life in disappointment that that's not a thing that's happening right now oh wow that that's pretty brilliant i i have to give credit to that idea that's that's just beautiful I don't know that I've watched his Joker audition. Is this Joker like like the Joaquin Phoenix film? I would not define that as a particularly great movie. Um, I'm very interested though now in um, he audition. He did like a Heath Ledger audition. That sounds pretty great. That sounds wonderful. I have not seen that, but it. It sounds life enhancing. I would I would be inclined to say. Um, 
I've heard random little things about um, Cruella. And then I saw a clip from it. And I had no interest whatsoever in watching Cruella. I really, I don't. I don't really. But I do think that if I were to go see Cruella, it would be very funny. It looks like a very funny movie. Not like an intentionally funny movie, but it looks like a very funny movie. I think of everything that's in theaters right now, Cruella would probably be the only movie that I would really want to see. Um, I, I like Emma Stone. I think she's a very charismatic uh, actress. She has good screen presence. Um, I've liked her ever since uh, Super Bad. Um, I didn't care for La La Land. Um, I don't really remember her in the Andrew Garfield Spider-Mans. So I can't really comment on that. But I like Emma Stone well enough. I, I imagine that she would give her all to this Cruella movie. <laughs> But, like, um, Liz and I were both saying, I mean, Liz, Liz had the thought that it's just, like, they should, they should just be brave enough to really just have her be an insane rich person that wants to murder a bunch of dogs. Like, have the, have the balls to just give us that vision of rich people are awful and evil and they don't see any moral issue with just slaughtering a bunch of dogs so that they can have a nice little coat that's that's it <sighs> i don't know this is the exci uh, exciting part of the build um Look at this beautiful sidewalk that I've assembled so far. Nice HD sidewalk for you. Yeah, I think like people really, people really took the idea of like there being complicated or nuanced like motivations to villains and they mistakenly attributed it to the idea that, well, every bad person Every bad person must be complicated. No. No, 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 no. No. Most of them aren't. Most people are just horrible, awful shits. Um, and they don't need, like, a sympathetic origin story. You know? It's kind of a shame. Bye, Sarah. Thanks for checking in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, are there any... Who's like... Are there good villains left that you would want? Like a sympathetic backstory origin movie? To... Oh, Kelly, I'm sorry. I have no idea why I thought you were Sarah. Okay. <laughs> I think you have a similar username. Because Sarah goes by Serrar. And Hamster Power, I saw that. I read it as Serrar. I'm sorry. Bye, Kelly. Thank you for dropping in. I I should have really known better. It's true. <laughs> when I was hearing about Does anybody anybody in the chat have a problem with like mild very 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 mild Cruella spoilers?
Um, I'm going to assume no, and I'm just going to talk. Um, but, like, you hear... You hear that they decide, yes, to have Cruella's mom killed by Dalmatians. Which is so stupid. Like, that's so... Like, that in and of itself. So stupid. But, like, you hear that. You hear, it like, oh, my mom was killed by dogs. It's like, okay, oh, that seems like... That seems a bit much. That seems, like, pretty vicious and egregious. Like, I can't believe they had, like, this woman get mauled by dogs right because that's the obvious thing you would expect she was mauled to death by dogs because that's like a thing that happens no 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 wasn't <laughs> it wasn't a mauling I've, I've only seen like the one little out of context clip but i can only imagine that it being in context just further cements the comedy of it but they, she gets like pushed over, she gets like pushed over a ledge on like a rich person's like property or whatever by their guard Dalmatians or something. It's just, ah. Uh, and it just looks so comical. It looks so comical. And the little... The little girl actress that they have for, like, little big baby Cruella that's watching her poor mommy get pushed. Um, she just doesn't even look that upset that her mom got knocked over a ledge. It's more just like... Oh, <laughs> oh I'm sorry, Levi. <sighs> Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. She's the Joker, baby. Um. <laughs> uh. I'm glad we both got there immediately. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Of all of the... I mean, making making the movie is one choice. But then, like, it also seems just like every subsequent choice was just about as bad of a choice as you could, as you could make. I guess the, the director of this um also directed I Tonya, which I did not see. Um but it is about Tanya Harding. Um I was like a little interested because uh I like Margot Robbie, generally speaking, as an actress. Um I think I hear my cat barfing in the other room. I'm sorry, Liz, if you're having to deal with that. I'm doing very important streaming things. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it's like Disney saw I, Tonya and was like... <laughs> Wait a second. Oh, okay. It was a false alarm. My cat was not throwing up. Yeah. Yeah. So Spider-Man, huh? Um, I really do think Stephen Young would be a, a decent choice. Um, I can't think of other actors. The only young male actor that I can think of is uh, Timothy Chalamet, and um, I don't know. There's something about him that I don't like. I don't know. He's just got a face, an unpleasant face. Maybe it was his character in uh, in like Lady Bird. But I mean, um, 
Well, I mean, maybe Chalamet would capture the unlikability of Peter Parker. Maybe that's what we need. Maybe we need a truly detestable, uncharismatic, rotten um, Peter Parker. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, I saw Lady Bird. I didn't really even know who Timothy Chalamet was when I saw that, but... Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. I don't know. I mean... I'm not like an apologist. Those movies are very entertaining though. I mean, Sam Raimi can can make a fine film. Uh, movie with what's her name with the time machine. Mm. Hmm? I'm, I don't know this. I do not know this film. Oh, you're now oh, young young Harrison Ford that was not a good young Harrison Ford I don't know he 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 comes off real bimbo to me he's got big bimbo energy um which I don't know maybe that was just his take on uh on Han Solo I guess Han Solo has a little bit of bimbo energy in a way um but I don't know. Again, I would say it's a little old. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jake Johnson. You're talking about Jake Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't hate it. I mean, again, if you're going to go with an older Peter Parker, I don't see why you wouldn't. Yes. Yeah, that was, uh, that was Peter B.'s voice in um, Spider-Verse. I mean, maybe Spider-Verse is just the right way to go with the movies at this point. I mean... I have not... I still haven't seen The Mitchells versus The Machines. Um, I've been interested in it. I've heard mostly very good things about it. I know that it was by a lot of the people that worked on Spider-Verse. It also has uh, Abby Jacobson's voice, and I love Abby Jacobson. Um, oh, yeah. Shies away. A little gay panic, modern gay panic. Well, you know. Every day, every day a little closer. <laughs> um, t -t -t I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, there was those Eternals trailers. Yeah, I would say so. If uh, if the Earth is not completely expired within the next five to ten years, then yes, at some point we will probably get um, queer representation on major media. Yeah, I think that's very true. Um, I mean, I think that's even... That's even like a textual thing, right? They refer to it, or I've seen writers kind of talk about, you know, he does the quips and he makes the jokes in the costume and it's kind of to mask his general insecurity in his non-costume life. So, 
but I mean, the other thing, too, is that honestly, like, yeah, it would be great to have somebody that could be the suit actor and, like, the non-suited actor, but you're also at a point where if you really wanted to, you could have, like, a completely separate suit actor and non-suit actor, um, I would say, so... Well, that too, I mean, like, it, there's there's so many different, like, he's been around for such a long time, and there's so many different writers and interpretations of the character, and the character himself has been through so much, which, again, is one of the reasons why I think something like Spider-Verse is just more manageable. Because I do think when you're doing, like, the live-action spider-man's name is above the marquee kind of thing um you have to present sort of that the most likable mainstream version of spider-man just because if you don't if you went out on a limb and you made like peter weird or unlikable or things like that there would be so many people that their experience with spider-man is only those movies like the populist version that's like very uh consumer friendly and they're gonna be like what the heck was that why why did they do that and then they never make another movie like that again <laughs> i remember uh well i listened to blank check podcast and they had talked about final fantasy spirits within from the perspective of there was i guess that character was like featured in maxim around when that movie came out like they made these high resolution <laughs> wasn't um am i am i mistaken or was she voiced by ming na i think she may have been i don't know i could be wrong She should be in more. She's great. Uh, I have watched... I watched the entire first season of Killing Eve, and then I... and then I have not watched the subsequent seasons, although it looked very entertaining. Um, it's all on Hulu, right? I think it is. I just have to... You know, I, I pick and choose the things that I'm going to watch carefully. Um, I try, even though, even though my wife may not believe me, I try to avoid watching too much that would have excessive or egregious violence or sex. And although I don't think Killing Eve is the worst about that stuff, it's also about an assassin, so... There's some of that. Um, but no, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, I had never, like, I had never watched Grey's Anatomy or anything, so I didn't really know Sandra Oh. She's also great in Invincible as Mark's mom. I'm glad that they have given Mark's mom a lot more to do than the comic. Um, I'm pretty excited for them to do the additional seasons of that because they've really by my estimation, kind of really um, streamlined and enhanced a lot of things about that story. Like, I think maybe Robert Kirkman is just a better writer now, or I assume he's probably working with like a team of writers on it, so he's able to have people kind of tune up some of his more basic instincts since there's a lot in Invincible that's just a little like, yeah, maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. And again, I mean, like, it's a different medium. I have no issues with your squeamishness, boo. None whatsoever.
It's honestly been so long since I had read the Invincible comic. I ha- I used to collect it in the Ultimate Editions. Like, they were big. They would have usually basically about, like, three to four, like, trade paperbacks worth of material. And I got to, like, four or five. Um, and then I stopped buying those Ultimate Editions. So... I don't know, I just kind of dropped off. I'm, I'm familiar with some of the stuff that happens afterwards, but, like, I stopped reading before they got to some of, I guess, the the bigger arcs in the comic, um, which I will refrain from referencing overtly, but, you know, I know, like, the Viltrumite Empire comes a lot more to the forefront as things progress, so um, I never really got to those and the antagonists that are involved with that, so... Um, it sounds interesting, but it's just like, I, I remember, I remember feeling a little burned out on reading it at the time and not terribly interested in seeing where it was going, which is another reason why, honestly, I'm a little more excited about the show. Um, because I feel like, again, it just seems like the writing's a little bit stronger and maybe there won't be as much of a feeling of like, a lull or too much of ebbs and flow um because i would say like that original invincible run was probably a little bit more like you know it's like jazz man it's just jazz um where he was just kind of making shit up off the top of his head and nobody was there to be like quality control or really i mean i'm sure he had an editor but i don't think there was anybody really saying like no robert like that's probably a dumb thing to do with this character or, you know, whatever. Okay. We're really getting there with this very exciting initial part of this build. Um, Oh my God. There's a lot of little green panels. Um, I like these. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, things went kind of so fast. Um, cause like, I think it was, it wasn't even until like the, um, maybe like the end of the first episode that they, um, get to Mark even like having his power. So you get a little bit more of like the, the sense of like the tension or the the disappointment from him and from uh, his dad um, that he hasn't developed his powers yet. And you just kind of get to know Mark a little bit more as a person prior to the, um, um, prior to the powers kicking in. And I think that that's helpful, you know, like, you get a sense of who this kid is without the powers. And then you can see a little bit more of like how that changed his life. Right. Um, but in like the comic, I think all of that happens within like the first five or six pages of the comic. And it's just like, you know, by the time you're meeting Mark, he's, you know, already basically a hero in training. Yeah. So I, I think like, the things that they chose to like slow down and ruminate on and the things that they are just kind of maybe glossing over a little bit more so far, it seems like they've made overall very strong choices. I can hear a very slight echo of myself. I apologize in advance. I don't know how much that comes through on your end. But I'll just uh, try and stay a little chatty so that there's not too much of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. With the, uh, with like the, did he have a beard? I just watched it not too long ago, but I already like, I've got a memory like a sieve and it's just in and out. The birds are going wild. Yeah. This microphone's very good at like 
picking up birds that are all the way outside. But if I turn away from it, it's like I might as well be in another room. Like, I don't get it. Um, I, I enjoy that the birds are having a good time. I'm, I'm happy for them. Good for the birds. Yeah. Um, that's, um, I, I, I guess there's a lot of like lore that came in, um, that came into play like outside of the comic itself where it was kind of like Kirkman explaining certain things. And I guess he's, he's gone on the record a little bit more about like how Vil Viltrumite DNA and all that stuff is supposed to work. And I mean, it's interesting. Um, it's funny how much of that is like not in the text, but you can see where, Clearly, he must have thought it through because the things that happen in the text are kind of heavily influenced by a lot of those ideas. This first bag is really, like, there's a lot to do in it. Like, an absurd amount of pieces already. I was going to say before, I have... Um, I have both of the big, the larger Ninjago, like the creator expert sets. And they have like these really cool base plates that look like, like flowing water. Um, and it looks awesome. Like it looks really, really cool. But <laughs> uh, sometimes I like that sort of repetitive, tedious thing um, with Legos. Like it's just kind of it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle in a way. Do you want to play a game? Um, but it also looks a little nicer. Uh, a lot of these other creator expert, the modular stuff, they they give you a lot of like sidewalks and things like that. And it's just a lot of plates. I really like the diner set, but the diner set was another one that just like laying down that base work of just like so many plates is really just like, ugh. Um, here's our progress so far. A nice shot of that. We've got a little New York manhole cover there. There was also in this one a, a tiny little rat that I'm sure goes somewhere over here. But I mean, this thing, I think when it's fully constructed, is supposed to be like almost three feet tall or so. So obviously there's going to be a lot of vertical elements to it. You know, I was, I was kind of, I was heartened by the fact that they did such a large Marvel set. Because to me, I really do think that this means an X-Mansion is not off the table. There could... Uh, there could definitely be an X mansion. I could see them getting that approved and actually manufacturing it. Um, I think that's a little trickier because like the daily bugle is a vertical build, um, an X mansion, a satisfying X mansion is going to need to be a little bit more of a horizontal build. And so I think it'll probably be one of those things where it's like mostly a facade, um, which is okay. I would just, I would, you know, you want like a danger room, right? But it's it's almost like I would prefer that they kind of do them as separate things, right? Like do an X-Mansion and do a danger room separately so that you can get up to a decent piece count on both. Um, but I have to say, I mean, honestly, I feel like Lego appears to be willing to make a little bit more crazy sets recently. Um, I think generally speaking, since the pandemic started, there's been like an increased interest. Um, it seems like kind of across the board for like every hobby in a way. Technically they did, well, they did the X-Jet. It wasn't the Blackbird, but they did an X-Jet. 
um, which I got, of course. But yeah, I mean, I, I think too, um, I've kind of thought that a lot of these manufacturers, Lego, Hasbro, um, they're just, they seem to be willing to do stuff that is a bit more ambitious as a project. Um, and granted, I mean, some of that is them getting in on like the crowdfunding sort of thing. Like, I think in the next two months or so, we're supposed to have the Sentinels start being shipped out. Um, and I, I have to say too, like, I do think that Hasbro has been improving in terms of the quality of the Marvel Legends both from like the sculpt and the engineering and then like for all the back and forth about how difficult a line to collect it is like pretty much all their gi joe like six inch line that they've made so far have been really good quality like i don't know i think that it's a good time to be into collectibles in general and i think again a lot of it to me i would at least attribute it to being kind of a a pandemic thing um you know it's just a hypothesis i think you do get a lot more people that are just kind of interested in this sort of thing there's been, uh, I mean, I've seen some news stories and things like that that are kind of talking about like the Lego black market and things like that. And you just see, you know, some of it, yes, is just like people that are kind of prospecting and taking advantage of the fact that there is maybe a little bit more enthusiasm for some of these um, hobbies. And so they're just, you know, buying stuff for the purposes of reselling it. And then it just creates kind of like an inflated uh, value or inflated demand that maybe isn't really even there as much, but it's just like you're just competing with trying to get the collectibles in the first place. Um, like one of the things that Liz had pointed out to me was, um, you know, the aftermarket pricing on certain manga. Um, you know, some of it, yeah, is for manga that's been out of print. And so that's kind of to be expected in a way, but there's also just like, I don't know, certain things, if you miss them lately, it's like you're going to end up paying a lot. And that's like across almost every hobby that that you could have. So I don't know, you know. That too was one of the reasons why I was like, well, if I want this set even a little bit, I should probably just get this set. Oh yeah, like Gunpla, all the Gundams, if you miss them, you're going to end up paying a lot. I don't do a ton of model kits. I do have some new model kits that I would like to build. But they just require a little bit more brain juice than building Lego requires. Because I got to snip the little pieces and not snip my finger and not have like big ugly tabs remaining but also not cut into the the body of the stuff but i enjoy it i mean i built a couple models this i i made the comparison earlier but I, this really is a lot like jigsaw puzzles to me um when we when my wife and I were having to stay at my sister and my brother-in-law's house, I had gotten like a jigsaw puzzle to assemble. Just as kind of like a de-stress, like turn your brain off, follow the instructions sort of thing after work. Um, but a very nice family member of, of ours um, just like assembled a good like third of it while I was um, at work one day and that just kind of ruined it for me I couldn't I couldn't finish it 
like I don't know I didn't I didn't appreciate it I know that they were they didn't mean anything by it but you know the nice thing with the um, the nice thing with the Legos is that you know nobody's gonna nobody's gonna come in I mean granted of course we're in our own house now and things like that so it's a very different situation but I still have found this to be overall a, a good stress reliever. Yeah, I was I was pretty upset, but I also like I didn't want to didn't want to make a whole deal out of it. But I think you know, I think she could tell. She could tell. I mean, obviously, I ended up like putting the thing away. I still have that somewhere. Um, Okay, what? I was confused because it looked like we were done, but I still had a bunch of pieces. But I can see now it's that I didn't realize that there are much more panels to be applied for the sidewalk. Um, that I just hadn't noticed on this step. So we're almost done with bag one. We can move on. To the next bag wow i've already been streaming an hour that is crazy um normally when i'm just doing like the toy opening streams i feel like it takes a good long time but even if i'm talking the whole time it, i feel like i don't know i feel like it seems to pass by a little slower this has gone fairly fast for me um, I think I mentioned early in the stream, I don't know how long the battery on the T7 um, will last. So if it gets, if it dies, then that'll probably be my stopping point. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I'm, I'm planning on just keeping it going for a little while. So thanks for everybody that decides to continue to hang around and, and chat uh, and say hi and drop in and all that good stuff. Uh, we're making a little bit of progress. But yeah, if the camera does just like cut out, for one, I apologize. And then for two, I'll probably take that as an, a good natural stopping point. I have made some ground. There's so much to this. Um, maybe I'll try and stream the full build. This will be a 100% full Chivo run for this. Yeah, working isn't great, but I mean, it does allow me to do ridiculous stuff like buy these very expensive Lego sets. Um, until I become independently wealthy from streaming toys on uh, on Twitch and it just becomes a self-fulfilling cycle here's my here's my spare pieces this is a little Lego man shaped tray where I put all the little extras and I think I don't think I missed anything okay I think we're done with box or bag number one. So this is the end result of bag number one. Beautiful. You got your little rat, you got boxes, boxes, rat. A, um, a humble beginning. You got Aunt May and her, and her cookies. Perhaps Aunt May is delivering cookies to this rat. I don't know, let your imagination run wild. Did I say imagination? I might have. Bag two. Um, yeah, I mean, it could. I... <laughs> um... Oh my god. It's kind of funny, like, I don't know. 
they went through so much trouble to get Aunt May back as a character, but like, for what? What are you really getting out of that character? Like that definitely, as a character, she, she definitely feels like a product of the idea of a young Spider-Man or, you know, somebody in Spider-Man's life that he has to, yeah, peril, but I mean, you that's what you have girlfriends for, right? I mean, just give Peter a girlfriend and then get them in trouble. Or his co-workers or whatever, you know. I mean, honestly, the idea of peril for Aunt May, I mean, she, like, initially was depicted as somebody that appeared to be, at the very least, in her late 70s, maybe older. It's like, how many good years do you have left, Aunt May? How hard should we be working to save you from this peril? Yeah, I mean... Aunt May would be a fine addition to the supporting cast if they, if, yeah, again, it, it, it just, it doesn't feel like the supporting cast matters that much. I don't know. I mean, I started the very beginning of uh, Dan Slott's run and I read it and it seemed like he was kind of trying to do um, a little more of a focus on the idea of like building up a um, supporting cast. And I don't know, is it Chip Zdarsky? that's writing spider-man currently i think maybe the same thing of just trying to do a little bit more with that no it's not zdarsky i don't know why i thought it was oh spencer nick spencer huh did nick spencer did spencer do superior foes of spider-man because i thought people were like excited to have Spencer. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, here is, uh, here's Gwen, and I have to look at the guy's name again because I still don't know. Ron Barney. Ron Barney and Gwen. I'm going to bring them up, and then we're going to get them into focus. Oh, there they are. Everyone's favorite characters. Ron Barney. Gwen. People like Gwen. Nobody knows who Ron Barney is. If there's any Ron Barney stands in the um, in the chat, please let yourself be heard. Let's get that Ron Barney rep that you've waited so long for. Yeah, who's gonna write the new Ron Barney book? Who would you cast as Ron Barney? in the next Spider-Man film. Maybe... Hmm. Lil, Lil Rel? Lil Rel... Um, oh, what's his last name? Howley? Rowley? I don't know. You could probably find an actual Ron Barney. I mean, probably so. Maybe Ron Barney is just like a guy that works at Lego. And they were like, hey, Ron, you want to be in the new Spider-Man set? And he's like, who? Yes, I do. Will I get royalties for being in the Spider-Man set? No. All right. Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, that first bag, I have to admit, took a little bit longer to get through than I was expecting. Oh, on the sticker, there's like real subtle, there's real, real subtle little things that I don't think you'll even be able to see once the sticker itself is applied. So it's exit, do not block, and then there's like, Eddie was here, little green goblin symbol. But this is like basically the exact same color as the door. So I guess that's just a little treat. A little treat for you as the person that was assembling this thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I mean, both of them are criminals. Um, I'm excited for the second Venom film. I think that's going to be... Uh, Get him, Spidey! Uh, that should be the name of Venom 3. Get him, Spidey! Um, I enjoyed the Venom movie quite a bit. Did, uh, did you all enjoy the Venom movie? I had a good, good time. And, you know, to me, I feel like you could tell that uh, Tom Hardy had a real good time, too. And at the end of the day, isn't that what it's all about, folks? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't even joke. Don't say that. No. They would never. They would never. No. There are very few movies, especially comic book movies, that, like, I feel... Comic book movies are, like, secretly the most cheapskate movies in the world. Um, but they, like, they don't... <sighs> Look, Henry Henry Cavill's great in everything that he's in, but he cannot just, like, save every role that he's cast in. <sighs> I forgot what I was saying. I'm so I'm so distressed by this idea of ever having to even hear about Null ever again. Null for anybody that is not aware. I don't even want to say it. Like I'm so mad you brought it up. I'm not going to spend any time talking about Null or explaining Null, because Null does not deserve any explanation. Because it's so stupid. It's the stupidest thing. If you want an explanation of who Noel is. Just think of the stupidest thing that you can ever think of and then make it ten times as stupid as that. And that's that's Noel. Ugh. And it just went on forever. It went on forever. I don't even know if it's over in the comics. It's Lobo times ten, times a million. I mean, truly. You're not far off. Um, it was just very weird timing because, like, Marvel was doing King in Black pretty much at the same time that DC was doing Death Metal. And Death Metal is about, like, an alternate universe Batman who becomes the Joker in his universe. And then gets the powers of Dr. Manhattan. And it's as stupid as it sounds in that one sentence that I just said. Except they like, they made like a hundred comics about this thing. They made a hundred comics about this. Like awful, 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 awful comics. And it's just like, it's just like if you were to get like two eight-year-olds and they'd be like, Oh, but what if, what if, like, what if Wonder Woman had, like, a mohawk and you give her, like, a golden chainsaw? Wouldn't that be fucking rad? Except that was the comic. That was, like, the entire comic. And it went on for forever, forever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever. But it had, like, this big, stupid, big bad, which was that dumb... Was it, was it an invisible chainsaw? That makes sense. That tracks with the invisible. But I just... It went on for so long. And, and at the exact same time, Marvel was like, well, let's do kind of that, except like, it's just a completely original character, except he's like the god that, the god of the symbiotes, which is where Venom came from. I mean, it sounds less stupid, except the comics were awful, all awful, awful, awful. Terrible. I'm owed an apology from Marvel. One, two, three. I feel like I'm missing something. No. I put everything down that I was supposed to, I think. Oh, no, I didn't.
Um, there's some nice Lego sets coming out soon. I'm pretty excited for some of these that are coming out. Um, they're doing a creator three in one. That's a castle. Um, two of the builds look really cool. I'm honestly tempted to get two of them. Um, they're, they're, it's, it's an expensive set. It's an expensive set. It's $99. Um, I say that while assembling the Spider-Man set. That was $299. But the thing about the three-in-one is that I like two of the builds. So I was kind of thinking of getting two. I don't know. When I say it, it sounds egregious. But I've done many an egregious thing in my life. I also have bought enough things on lego.com that I have enough VIP points that I can get $100 off of a set. So I could conceivably buy two of them essentially for the price of one. I don't know, you know. Honestly, I think like the the next Ninjago sets that are coming out also look pretty cool. Um I, I do, I just feel like Lego's been making a lot of nice stuff lately, which is great. It's a good thing, but it's also, yeah, it's challenging financially. It's a significant financial burden, as many things I enjoy and do happen to be. Uh, I think I mentioned towards the beginning of the stream, I have recently also purchased some other toys since the last time I streamed, as would be expected of me. They, they kind of, well, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't Lego, but Hasbro had building toys that were Transformers. They were called the Creos. Did you get any of the Creos? I have like, I have a Creo. Bye Ryan. Thanks for, thanks for watching. I don't know how much longer I'll be going, but you know, this will obviously be a multi-part thing considering I'm barely into bag two. I hope work is fun, as fun as work can be. Liz has a very healthy um, perspective on work in that her feeling is that labor should be abolished. And it's hard to disagree with. I think there are some people that genuinely do like working. Sure. I don't know. I don't really want to spend too much time talking about that. Talking about work isn't fun. I'm having fun. This is like my new hobby. And I've, and I've, I've invested a fair amount into this. This new hobby. I mean, I have, a, I have a microphone arm. I didn't have that before. I have a second webcam. I didn't have one before. I do think that there are lots of people that would work, even if work wasn't required. I mean, I think that I would find certainly something to do. Um, but I do enjoy doing art, so I might do more art. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like the serving shifts? I would think that that would be easier to, like, sneak a, a sip of beer, but maybe not. Maybe it's harder to sneak a sip of beer. Yeah. Your dad working for fun is wild. It's crazy. It's wild and crazy kids. <laughs> I mean, you could make a robot for serving shits too. I'm sure there's a market for it. Ah, yes, the famed robotic shit peddler. Peddle your wares. Uh, da, da, 
I, I do not want to stop you. I do not. This is uh, starting to resemble things. We're getting a little more vertical now. Is that in focus? It's hard for me to tell. I can see everything. I can see I'm in focus. This seems mostly. WFC, War for Cybertron. Uh, I really haven't gotten much new Transformers. Um, I pre-ordered several of the Beast Wars. Um, so I have... I've seen Megatron, Purple Dinosaur Megatron, in person multiple times, but I have it on pre-order, so... I talked myself out of purchasing it because I don't need to. Mm. Um, I did get Air Razor. Um, what do you think about that Grimlock? Um, the Beast Wars Grimlock. I um, I remember having Grimlock because I did not have Di um, I didn't have uh, Dinobot um, back in the day, so Grimlock was kind of my stand-in. Yeah, the original was really cute. Um, he he definitely participated in shoving uh, Cruella Deville's um, mother off of a balcony, and that's why Cruella Deville wants a coat made out of Transformers. Um, I would watch that movie. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I, what else has been announced? Oh, Scorponok. I pre-ordered Scorponok. Um, I'm wondering who would do, but who would do the, the IDW? Nobody's done IDW Turtles. I don't know if, um, I don't know if Nika would. Um, and I can't imagine Playmates. Playmates, though, did recently announce that they're making, like, um... Playmates are making some new Turtles toys. Um, they're making two packs that kind of look like they're meant to sort of compete with the... Um, with the Nika two packs that have been coming out for a while now. Um... But they're re-releases for the most part, but it also seems like they may be using it as a chance to release um, a shredder that they had developed a long time ago. And the other one that's been announced is a new Triceraton that nobody's ever seen. So it's exciting. I mean, it's it's nice to see Playmates doing something with it. I don't know if there's been... Has there been a new announcement of like a new Turtle series? Because I feel like since... Um, I don't know if I've heard of anything since Rise ended. Um, it doesn't feel right that there's not some version of Turtles on the air right now. And it was also just like really annoying that Rise was so difficult to watch anywhere. Like I think now technically I could log in through like my Spectrum app and I could watch a selection of episodes but even that it's like it's not all of them and i don't even understand why because they have like the first episode and they have like then it jumps to like episode four and i'm like why um and i you know i love 2k12 and what i've seen of rise um, I've liked, I mean, I bought some toys from it because I'm pretty open to like, I'm open to new interpretations of the turtles. Like they, they themselves, like even by 2K3, you're talking about like, there's been a number of different interpretations of the turtles at that point, And they're just kind of like a universally just fun concept, right? So why not? 
But there were so many people that I saw that just like, they seemed to have a terrible attitude towards Rise and like take issue with it. And I'm like, well, why? Like, what do you really want for it to stay the same forever? I mean, it never has. It's literally always been changing. Like by 2K3, you had the movie turtles, you had the 80s turtles, you had the comics turtles, and then you had the 2K3 turtles. And then you had like the Archie comics turtles the uh, like there's always been a million different versions of it so to even like i can understand maybe you have a preference like maybe you have a version of the turtles that you relate to the most but like to be opposed to them just trying like a new kind of weird or highly stylized thing like i don't get it like i don't see how you could be a turtles fan and have that big of a problem with it you know um yeah, I mean, even just, like, color, like, even having colored bandanas, I mean, that's a change. If you're, like, a purist that was like, I only like Mirage comics. That's the only turtles that are real turtles. Doesn't make a lot of sense. So, yeah, I never really got, like, people that had any issue with Rise. Um, because the other thing, too, is that, like, I feel like Turtles is pretty good about, like, celebrating its history and like the different versions of the turtles that have been around because like in 2k in 2k 12 they referenced um the 80s cartoon of course and then like just before that they had that crossover that was um 2003 meets the 80s turtles and i mean you get it you get it you get whatever version of turtles you want the idw comics now it's like a very, it's a very flexible series, idea, intellectual property, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, I would say if anything, like, I'm a little bummed that it was hard to catch Rise because I would have liked to have supported it a little bit more. And, yeah, I mean, I guess I could have done that by, like, subscribing to Nickelodeon or something like that, but... I don't even know if that would have like made it available on demand necessarily or if it was on demand it would be like just a weird random assortment of it like have they even released it on dvd like it's just i don't know it's weird and now it's just kind of i'm just kind of bummed that there's just not some version of the turtles on the air though i'm sure that there's been times since my birth that there hasn't been a version of ninja turtles on the air um but i don't know honestly because like at the end of the 80s show they had they had like the next mutation around then right so, so i kind of feel like it's a thing that's usually had some kind of presence right now it's strange because even though there's not really like a media presence for the turtles there's like almost more merchandise than ever before so i'm missing a little gray panel it's probably right in front of my face ah Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that whatever they end up coming out with next, I mean, like I said, I, any version of Turtles, as long as there's something, is good with me. So um, I'll be interested to see whatever they do next. Um, but yeah, I mean, there is a lot of toys right now, which is very cool. Um, I think they're really making some excellent toys. I'm interested to see what Playmates is going to do since they're, yeah, they're the originals, right? So it references putting some newspapers up on these walls. I'm wondering if they specified which ones. Yeah, they did. So that's a little trick is that when you have pieces that aren't in the bag at the front, they give you a little warning and I didn't pay attention because I was talking. Um, so 
So I'm going to this unnumbered bag to get my, uh, one of my million newspapers. This is all newspaper. And I'll put that back to the side. And they all have like different little headlines. It's, it's pretty cute. Yeah, every, I think, no, no, no. There's like, there's one that's repeated multiple times. But other than that, they have like a bunch of different ones. So new building, okay. And then on the moon, Spider-Man, Threat or Menace. And no crime. My man. Okay. Oh my god. So many newspapers to keep track of here. Alright. Back to that step. Okay. The moon. Very good. We are back on track now that I found those and have applied them. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. So we've talked about pretty much everything that I know anything about. Spider-Man. Ninja Turtle. Transformers. Yeah, so I had pre-ordered Scorpion. I don't remember if there was any other releases that were around the same time or announced at the same time. Scorbinox is definitely the last one that I remember pre-ordering. Um, hmm. What else? Yeah. That's all I can think of. No, I've never gotten any of the Shattered Glass ones. Um, I mean, I've never even read that comic i know that it's fairly famous um and popular um i saw the megatron that was announced for that too he looked pretty cool um but i'm, I'm i try to be very particular with transformers um and honestly like i i like them but i'm also not like super familiar with non-beast wars non-transformers animated um I think like we're we're getting to a point where probably in the next five years we're gonna have enough Transformers animated nostalgia that maybe we'll see something done with that. Um, I saw Joe's rendition in the animated style of their uh, fan Transformer that looked really cool. Um, but yeah, I think I'm I'm mostly sticking to the. Um, like either the studio series releases but even that like I don't know if I'm going to get that Rekgar um, I think I might have pretty much everybody that I want from that studio series line um, oh I skipped a step did I? I think I did I think I did um but other than that, I mean, I think it's going to be like the Beast Wars releases. Them doing that Grimlock, I think, is interesting. Who? Who are you going to draw? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I try to stay focused on the Beast Wars. The other thing too is like, I really, like I really, really am running out of display space. Um, I've been talking about some new shelf acquisitions that I may make soon. We also have like these, um, we have these baseball bat display shelves um, or cases that can act as shelves that um, 
uh, Jorge, I had seen at his uh, house with Margot. Um, he used them, or apartment, um, when we had visited several years back. And uh, he was using them to display his um, amiibos. Uh, but I like the size, and I think I think our Nendroids were fitting in it. Maybe not. Maybe we had the Nendroids on top. But yeah, I think we did. We had the Nendroids on top, and we had a bunch of uh, Digimon figures in it. Um, so I might I might be putting those up to act as shelves, and also give us a little bit of additional display space for this and that. I mean, I have some walls that I can put stuff on. But it really is like it's getting tough. I don't I don't have a ton of space. Maybe when I become uh, a Twitch millionaire, I can um, I can buy a second house and uh, have lots of additional display space. We'll see. We shall see. Well, I was hoping that I would get to Daredevil, but I don't know if I am. I don't know if I'm gonna make it to Daredevil. Daredevil's on bag four, and this is still bag two. And let me tell you, folks, it's a, it's been a bit of a marathon for me, if I'm honest. Could be the talking. To be perfectly honest, when I'm doing, when I'm doing like a long Lego build, what I will normally do is like I'll just put on, uh, like, vine sauce. I've been watching his. Uh, his let's play of um, Resident Evil Village. So I don't normally have to do any talking or thinking besides assembling. Um, so this is a little bit more effort than I typically will have to exert while building. So maybe I'm also not being quite as quick as I can be. Um, but it has been fun. But I think Honestly, sad as it may be, I may, man, two hours and I've only assembled two of these bags and there's 16. Oh my God. How long is it going to take me to build this thing? I might need to do like multiple streams a day or something like that. Next time I, I just won't talk. I'll sit here in silence as I assemble this. And you'll watch it, and you'll like it, damn it. I could be drinking a little bit more, either beer or water. It should probably be water. So this is neat. Let me just show you the little thing that I just assembled. Because um, it's like it's like a little, a little hidey hole that's built in to the building where Pete is hiding his uh, his backpack, presumably with like his camera and whatnot. Or, you know, if it's high school or college, Peter, then his school books or a change of clothes or his costume. Um, I always liked that. I always liked that little convention. Obviously they played into that a lot with like the um, PS4 Spider-Man game. Um, but it's, I think a fun aspect of that character, him having to deal with a little bit more of like the minutia of existence and doing so in unconventional ways. I think it's those little like character things or facets that tend to feel real and make, make people kind of relate to the character a little bit more. Yeah. Anyway, it's a fun thing to include with this set. So good good choice designer person uh yeah we're gonna get through this bag i'm gonna show off the build so far and i think to spare my voice a tiny tiny bit i might be done sorry sorry to disappoint i know i said marathon this is by far the longest i've ever streamed um because i think prior to that like hour and a half maybe with some other stream i don't really remember um most of it is no longer available on my vod on twitch but i do have a uh, a vod 
archive channel over on um what's that website called youtube on youtube so if you ever wanted to catch up on uh previous installments of matt opens toys i have built lego on stream before as well just a couple times uh, those are usually like my Saturday streams. The last two times, though, they were like much, much, much smaller sets, and so I was able to complete them um, as I uh, as I streamed. Those were back in the uh, Halcyon days of yore, as they say. But yeah, I, I kind of like this setup. Every once in a while, I'm sure if I'm wanting to stream, I may find myself looking like crap. And so maybe I will uh, issue the, um, the face cam in those instances. But I thought, you know, when I've rewatched my videos, which I, I have done at least once with every, uh, with every stream, just a little quality assurance. I've thought like, well, maybe this would be a little bit more engaging if you weren't just staring at solely my hands. I think I've also taken a little bit more of a dynamic um, view. Now that may be limited to this um, when I'm building Legos and things like that. I think the more straightforward angle usually works well with the, um, with the toy opening business. I'm hearing that tiny little echo from the microphone when I um, press these in and they snap. Only very slightly. It might just be in my head. If you can hear it, let me know. Okay, we're making something fun. Looks like a soda machine. Yeah, I don't know how anybody would possibly like stream a significant amount of time longer than this, but like, I don't know. Like I said, I've watched <clears throat> Vine Sauce in the past and uh, I know he's done like very long streams, very, very long streams. Yeah, I, I have no idea how anybody could possibly do that. So the utmost uh, respect to people that are like long streamers. Um, maybe not the utmost respect. The appropriate amount of respect. You are ultimately just streaming video games. Which can be entertaining, don't get me wrong. I appreciate it. These are bold statements for Twitch. Just not much of a gamer. As I also said, this has been a tremendous amount of talking, so you'll pardon me if I leave the sparkling commentary off for just a second or two. What sticker is this? Sticker number four. Number four. Web juice. I'll show you web juice because the concept is disgusting. The idea of drinking web juice just repulses me entirely. Web juice. Vile. A vile concept. I take back any compliments that I've had for the set so far. There we go. Nice and crispy. Okay. All right. So we are, I'd say we're nearing the end of bag two. 
in case anybody is just uh, just tuning in. We made a fair amount of progress. I mean, that's quite a bit for uh, for just two bags. Does it look like two hours of work? No, not really. If I'm honest with myself. What? You talking to me? Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um. Now we're we're assembling soda cans that will go into the um, vending machine. Ugh. Oh my god, I, I got that first one in just fine. Mm, sure, I'll take it. Facing the wrong way, but I'll take it. Okay. Mm. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll go see Cruella later today. I had mentioned seeing a movie to a friend of mine earlier. And I think that it would be... Uh, Entertainingly bad. Um, <laughs> what are you? Is that Hunter? Oh, you're. Are you playing the uh, the record? Don't get me a copyright strike. All right. There's my. Uh, there's the vending machine. It's a little soda vending machine. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. desk thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, the vending machine is very cute. Um, a very cute part of the build overall. Would you like a closer look at the vending machine? I can, I can do that for you. Let me do that. Really cute. It's got the little coin slot, little thing right there. There's your sodas. Bye, Kira. Thanks for watching. There's the uh, very disgusting idea of web juice. Yeah, nice, clean, flat design. Looks good. Could probably make your own. Yes, thank you. Like I said, I think we're almost done with this. And then when I'm done with this bag, I will I will be retiring for the day. Um, but this looks to be a very impressive set. As usual, lots of little uh, details, a lot of little like inside references and things of that nature. Um, Lego always does a great job with these, to be honest. I've, I don't think there's a single one that I've assembled that I've been, uh, disappointed with personally. So if you have $299 and the space for it and you like Spidey man's, seems like a fun time.
make sure I didn't miss anything. I had missed something a couple pages ago. I think it looks good. Looks like I'm okay. This front area looks almost more like a police office, but I'm guessing that's just, uh, yeah, I guess it's because it's like a security desk. It makes sense. They got the little walkie-talkie and everything. You know, now that I have this set up, I should really do the much smaller Winnie the Pooh set that has long and often been teased on this stream. And that I know that there are multiple people waiting for me to put together. And I still haven't built it. Um, it's sitting presently under my desk. I do plan to build that. I can definitely do that on stream. It is far fewer pieces than this one. So I think that that should be uh, easily done. Okay. Yeah, it's like the little lobby reception area for the Daily Bugle. Some pretty clever design elements in this for the desk, I, I would say in particular. I'll, I'll give us a little, I'll give us another little close up here in just a second. Like I said, oh yeah, this is the last page of instructions for this bag, so. Next up in bag three, which will be next stream, whenever that may be. I mean, maybe it'll be before the weekend's over. Um, it's a long weekend for me, so I may have a little bit more time to stream. I wouldn't blame anyone if they had more exciting things to do than watch that, though. So, feel no obligation, friends. Huh? Hmm. I was, I was looking real hard for a piece and it was right in front of me. That's how it goes. Yeah, but next time, bag three um, to begin with. We're gonna be starting off right off the bat, putting together a little carnage figure and the Punisher with two guns. What a violent, what a violent guy. Yeah, okay, that's it. Um, and so I have all these extra little spare pieces. Whenever there's like a single stud piece, Lego likes to give you spares just in case you lose them. Um, which is why I have a lot of little single stud pieces in my little extras pile. Look at this. Nothing but extra pieces. And that's all that's in here is just extra pieces from various sets. All right. So I'm going to mark my progress here with my uh, sticker sheets. We'll set that down there to the side. All right. So Lego Spider-Man Daily Bugle set 76168 for anybody interested. Uh, these are, let me get this into a little bit of a clearer shot. Uh, this is bags one and two the progress that we've made so far. I like that this almost looks like a 3D render. Maybe it's just the effect of the green. Um, 
but yeah so that's the build so far it looks like just the lobby area and some of the beginning of the uh, exterior for the daily bugle building you got your little rat friend there by a pile of cardboard boxes you got your new york uh manhole cover you got your little vending machine your exit door security desk and then some newspapers and then another second newspaper stand there in the waiting area um, in addition to three minifigures so far uh, what's it ron barney what's that his name something like that gwen stacy aunt may and ron barney i don't know who ron barney is nobody knows who ron barney is i don't think ron barney has existed until this very lego set this is the fantastic introduction of ron barney himself aunt may has cookies delicious looking cookies i had pancakes for breakfast today as a matter of fact um liz and i both they were delicious i highly recommend pancakes uh folks if you're sleeping on pancakes it's time get out there get out there and eat some pancakes guys um but that'll do it for today's stream thank you to everybody that stopped by and visited and um chatted with me and talked with me about stuff while i built impressively little of this spider-man set so far um a lot to go we have two bags down of 16 so one eighth of the way there who knows some of these may be um smaller bags but yes thank you and i'll see you on wednesday probably for my next regularly scheduled stream where i don't build legos but i open toys so thanks again and uh everybody have a fun and safe memorial day weekend bye